So I'm here with Dr. Robert Cialdini. Welcome. I'm um, excited to have you. Um, you wrote your book Influence, which has sold over 2 million copies worldwide, uh, about 20 years ago. And um, the internet didn't exist back then. And right. this is 2013. Some researchers claim that people are using their brains differently because of the internet. Shouldn't you be publishing a book about weapons of online influence by now? Well, you know, um, I think you're right that the, the environment uh, has changed r dramatically because of technology of various sorts, but certainly um, the, the internet. And I think someone should write that book. But I will let someone who's an expert in online communication develop the links between the principles that I talk about, which I have to do with fundamental tendencies of human behavior, develop the link to the new environment of the internet because uh, those people who are experts there will do the best job of that, it seems to me. But I think you're exactly right that that book needs to be needs to be written because what we've found in our own uh, business is that many more people are coming to us now asking about how to employ the principles of influence that I talk about in online environments. So I think it would be very successful, such a book. Do you think you might find um, a seventh uh, principle of persuasion, for example, one that would uh, work best in the online world? Well, I'm not sure that there's a seventh principle, but I would say that the principle of social proof or uh, com uh, consensus is one that is especially compatible with the online world. We're finding that people now have the opportunity to reach out and, and gather the responses of many other individuals, especially peers, right, in deciding what to do. Uh, I saw a, a statistic that was amazing to me uh, recently. It turns out that online shoppers, 98% right, of them will read product reviews before they purchase. That's amazing as a psychologist dealing with human behavior. I don't know about anything that will get 98% of human beings to follow. But this principle of, of social proof consensus, the idea that we can reduce uncertainty about what we should do in a situation by examining what those around us like us are doing, right? That is a, 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 a perfectly suited to the kind of access that the internet now provides us. Right, so social proof consensus is very well applicable online. I find myself that um, a commitment and consistency is somewhat trickier to apply online. Do you agree? Well, actually, uh, I've seen some research that shows that there are ways to do that as well. Uh, for example, there's a study that showed that if we uh, ask people to fill out a, a, a questionnaire for us, a marketing questionnaire, right? And we don't typically get a lot of people who will do so. But if we ask in a way that begins with the, uh, the question, do you consider yourself a helpful person? The percentage of people who then fill out the request, or who, who comply with the request to fill out uh, the marketing survey and help the researcher goes from 29% to 76%. Because we've asked people to reflect on their trait of helpfulness. Most people think of themselves as helpful. So if we ask them to say, well, what, what's inside you? What are you committed to? Are you committed to helpfulness? And most people will say yes. And then we make a request for help. We more than double the percent of people who will then do so. So why isn't that available to uh, internet uh, uh, online marketers? Doesn't, it seems to me that it is. Right, that's a very clever, clever example. So, and by the way, they, they also showed that the same thing can happen if you want people to try something new. Instead of asking at the outset, are you, do you consider yourself a helpful person? They say, do you consider yourself an adventurous person? And 
once again, people look in and it turns out that a very high percentage of people consider themselves adventurous. <laughs> uh, as soon as they look inside, recognize that that's one of their commitments. They're committed to being uh, open and uh, available to new information. They then are significantly more willing to try a new product after they've answered that question for themselves. Right. And how about um, immunity to these principles of persuasion? Like, they've become extremely well known. You've written about them 20 years ago. It's been amazing success. Don't you think people will recognize when they are, when you're trying to influence them and becoming immune to them? You know, this is a crucial uh, question because it seems to me it elevates the importance of ethical and honest approaches to the influence process. So the principles of influence that I talk about, for example, are social proof, authority, scarcity, these kinds of things. If we assure that the people we are trying to move in our direction recognize that we are offering information about what most people have done in this situation, honestly, what the authorities are saying is the proper uh, step to take in this situation, that there is genuine scarcity, that the availability of this product is, is, is scarce and dwindling. If those are true, I want to be influenced. I am not averse to being influenced by people who are giving me accurate information about these principles. My knowledge that someone is trying to influence me will cause me to resist only if I know this is an unethical communicator. So this is a reason why what we need to do to to brand ourselves in the online uh, environment is someone who is scrupulously ethical in the way that they present information. And under those circumstances, I want to follow that person. I look for that person's influence. I don't try to deflect it. Right. How about ordering the principles of persuasion? Is there a perfect order in which to present um, principles of, of persuasion in order to be maximally persuasive? You know, I, I would say no, that what we have to do um, in every situation is to examine what's available to us there naturally and use the principle that is inherent in that situation waiting to be employed. Um, so, if we have great expertise, authority, that's the one we should raise to the surface first. If we have uh, a lot of people, we have the most popular option, that's the one we should raise to the surface. If there's true scarcity, that's the one, um, and so on. Uh, so, um, I have a friend who um, teaches in a marketing uh, department in the United States uh, uh, University uh, and he said that he has spent the last 16 years trying to find the single most effective sales approach and I saw him at a conference a while ago and he said I found it I found the single most effective sales approach it is not to have a single sales approach. That's a fool's game. You take every situation, it would be it would be a serious mistake to use the same strategy or the same sequence of, of, of approaches in every situation. You adjust to what the audience is, what the situation, the circumstances, based on what's available to you there. Uh, that way you become uh, more effective seems to me you simply have to raise things to consciousness you don't have to create uh, influence uh, levers and you become altogether ethical in the process because you're simply pointing to things that are true rather than fabricating or counterfeiting anything that doesn't belong in that situation
Right, right. Last question. Uh, do you know of a website that you find remarkably persuasive? I'll tell you of a, of a, a study that gives um, online marketers uh, a hint as how to become uh, especially persuasive. Um, it was a study done on a online furniture uh, website. So they were selling furniture online. And they changed the wallpaper uh, of, the, uh, of the website, the background wallpaper, in such a way to increase the likelihood that people would buy more expensive, comfortable furniture rather than economical uh, furniture, right? less expensive furniture. All they did was to put fluffy clouds in the background, and it engaged the idea of comfort. And that sent people down a route where they s began searching through the website for the more comfortable furniture. Mm -hmm. And they increased the percentage of, of comfortable furniture that was mostly it was sofas that were, that were purchased significantly, right? Um, and they wanted to be sure that that's what w had happened, right? So they did another uh, experiment where instead of fluffy clouds in the background, they put penny coins in the background. And that increased the percentage of people who would buy inexpensive, economical furniture. So the message is, what is your fundamental concept? What is your strength? What is the thing that you offer that other online uh, uh, commercial entities don't? The pennies, is that because that made them think of money and so want to save? Small amounts of money, yes, pennies. Pennies, there's a, a, trivial amounts of money. So they were worried about, they were thinking about money instead of comfort. So the idea is, wh whatever your strength is, you should represent it in some kind of image, some kind of graphic on the background of your site. It will send people to your strength. Thank you very much, Dr. Robert Cialdini. Good.